What's going on everybody? So as promised, uh, this video today is going to be about a proper setup for skeet shooting. Uh, now, when I, I'm going to be saying skeet shooting quite a bit. When I mean that, I actually mean skeet and trap, unless I specifically mention it. But basically what I want to go over today is what you need to go out and do uh, proper skeet shooting kind of thing, uh, skeet and trap shooting. So there are several main factors you need to consider uh, when getting into the sport. Uh, factor number one, which is probably the most important, is what type are you getting into? So what I mean by that is, are you going out to like a registered legitimate skeet and trap club where you're shooting uh, like like registered targets, uh, um, as well as matches where you're shooting legitimate 25 rounds? Or are you just going into the backyard, your backyard or uh, a piece of property with some friends and using your own private thrower? Uh, if you're doing option number two, you can pretty much ignore this entire video and do whatever you want. If you're doing option number one, where you're getting into a little more legitimate uh, version of skeet and trap, uh, this video is going to be for you. Now, uh, disclaimer, this video is primarily for people getting into the sport or considering getting into it, or for those of you who are new and are just looking at options of what to, what to get into and what to do. So, uh, let's just get right into it. Um, first thing, you, there's two main things that you need, and only two, right? Number one is a firearm, like an actual shotgun. Number two is ammunition. Anything after that is secondary. It's not mandatory for the usage of the sport. Uh, while those extras will make your life easier, you don't need them to, to go out and shoot. So, uh, we're going to get into the most important one first, uh, which is the, the guns. So, obviously for skeet and trap shooting, you're using a shotgun. Caliber is your choice. My personal preference is 12 gauge. Um, you can go 12, 20, 20. Like, I, there's people at my club specifically that shoot with 410. You can, you can use whatever you want. So, we're going to go over the three types of shotguns that you see uh, at skeet and trap ranges. Uh, I'll go from what I see as the least popular to the most popular and leave it for you to decide. Now, if it sounds like my voice is coming in and out, it's because I'm walking around the camera. I'm trying to, because uh, I am going to be handling these guns. Uh, they are all unloaded just for the record. So uh, let's get started. So the least popular of the three is the pump action shotgun. Uh, and that's generally the one you see the most new shooters come out with uh, because of the fact that pump action shotguns just in general are cheap. So. Uh, right here, this is a Benelli Nova pump action shotgun. Uh, the reason this is a less popular shotgun than what you see with, uh, let's say, a semi-automatic or a double barrel, uh, is because of the main issue of a pump action shotgun, which is the pump. Now, if you're shooting trap, a pump action is actually not that bad because you're only ever firing one shot at a time. Now, when you're shooting skeet, that's a little bit different because at a registered club, at stations one and two and uh, six, uh, I believe six and seven, or at seven or eight, you're shooting a total of four targets. So the way the house system works is there's a high house, which fires a, uh, a bird is gonna come high and it's gonna come down low. A low house, the bird's gonna go low and fly up high. Now, once you've shot at those two birds, you're gonna get what's called a double. So it's actually firing two birds at the exact same time. One's flying towards you, one's flying away. So a, a, shot, a pump action shotgun, you are handicapping yourself because I'm gonna show you, hopefully the camera picks this up okay. So when you fire your first shot, so you'll see your first bird, you'll bang, you'll shoot it. What you have to do then is you can't just pull the trigger again. You actually have to, you have to rack it. Now, when you rack it, you do that. Uh, for starters, you're wasting precious time having to go like that. As well as when you do it, your front sight, when you pump the shotgun, does that. And when you do that, it means you have to bring the shotgun back up onto target again in order to take that second shot. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. I, I've ski, I, I do a lot of skeet shooting, and I, I've shot with this shotgun before uh, many, many times. I've never shot a perfect game with it, but I've come close. That being said, generally speaking, when I suffer a miss, it's because of the doubles where I have to and take the shot at that second target. So it, it is a handicap of the pump action. But again, if you want to use a pump, more power to you. I'm, just, I'm simply just passing the information on it. Your second option, uh, which is going to be a better option, uh, is a semi-automatic. Now, semi-automatics you see a lot more than you'll see uh, pump actions. It's because of the simple fact you don't have to pump. Um, that's the great thing with it. Now, the, the fatal flaw with semi-automatics uh, is reliability. So semi-automatics in general, uh, especially with those really light uh, birdshot loads and game loads and target loads, certain shotguns just will not cycle them. So reliability is definitely an issue uh, with, uh, with semi-automatics. Now, 
uh, you could buy, you know, an expensive Beretta or an expensive Benelli and with like a, an auto regulating gas system kind of thing. And you'd probably be okay. Or you could go with options like this Weatherby where you can actually change the piston out, uh, and tailor the gun to the load, uh, which is definitely an option as well. Uh, that being said, uh, most skeet shooters actually reload. Um, and great idea, but reloads do not cycle semi-autos. Like the, even this one, this thing will eat just about anything. Will not eat light reloads. So if you are intending on reloading and loading them light so you can try and save some of the recoil, you're going to have to either go with a pump or a double barrel. That being said, semi-automatics are great options. Uh, however, they are generally more expensive than a pump. So cost is something that you have to consider as well but they are more popular. Uh, last is the double barrel. So the double barrel, um, now when I say double barrel, I mean either over, under, or side by side. So what I mean by that is this specific shotgun, as you can see, is an over and under. So it's got a barrel on the top and a barrel on the bottom. A side by side is basically where it goes right and left kind of thing, where it's top and bottom, right and left. Uh, these are the over unders are the most popular uh, because uh, for starters, the reliability. Um, you pull the trigger twice and it solves the problem kind of thing, uh, as well as, uh, which I'll show over there when you're ejecting your shells and things like that, uh, like taking your shells out with a semi-automatic and a pump, they actually throw the shells on the ground, which means at some point you got to go pick them all back up with a, uh, over under, you simply just take the shells out, throw them in your pocket or the spent hulls and then load new shells in as you go. Uh, over under, uh, generally can be expensive, but they can also be cheap. You can find them like a model like this was about $620. You can find them anywhere from, you know, $500 all the way up to 150,000. It, <laughs> it's kind of what you want. In my opinion, anything past 1500 bucks, you're paying for the name and like all the custom engraving and the custom woodwork, things like that. Next thing to consider with a shotgun is barrel length and chokes. So your barrel length, ideally, you want to keep it at 28 inches to 32. Um, both these shotguns here have a 30 inch barrels. This one's a 28. Um, that, that little two inches, I mean, at least in my eyes, doesn't make much of a difference, but you know, teaching their own. So you want a fairly long barrel going out with like a tactical shotgun, like a tactical 870 or a Mossberg with a cylinder bore choke or with a cylinder bore barrel and an 18, 18 and a half inch barrel. Uh, it's, it's not going to work very well. So, uh, you want a shotgun with chokes. So most chokes, uh, for skeet specifically, you want to use chokes that are, uh, improved cylinder, uh, cylinder or companies like a Remington is a good example. They actually make, um, uh, or, uh, it's called, it's labeled as skeet. Uh, those are good options because with skeet shooting, because the targets are never flying that far from you, you want a fairly wide pattern where with a modified and a full, you're getting patterns like that, right? Because the targets are so close, you want as many pellets in the air as possible. Um, now, uh, disclaimer, you do have to aim a shotgun. There's this common misconception out there that when you're firing number nine birdshot, for example, you've got 400 and something pellets flying through the air. You don't need to aim. That is a lie. I'm telling you right now, if you go by that doctrine, you were going to miss every single time your choke and your barrel will do, will help. But you as the shooter got to do the brunt of the work. You need proper trigger control. You need proper follow through and you need proper, uh, 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 bead alignment with, with said target as well as distance, because with a shotgun on a moving target like this at the center stations, you actually have to aim almost five feet ahead of the target and fire. And when you do that, you got to go bang and keep the gun moving. Now, this is something I can't teach you in a YouTube video. This is stuff you have to experience yourself, but needless to say, you have to aim a shotgun, uh, even when skeet shooting and even with proper chokes when you're trap shooting, um, most uh, people, when you're trap shooting, will use either a modified or improved modified. Uh, the reason you do that is because with trap, the target is actually flying away. With skeet and trap, they're flying across, or sorry, skeet and trap. Skeet, they're flying across from you. Trap, they're flying away. So uh, when they're flying away from you, you want to choke with a tighter pattern. Uh, modified and improved modified are the best options, in my opinion. Uh, some people run full chokes. That's good, too. In my eyes, a full choke's a little excessive, but again, it's all personal opinion. And this is stuff that you are gonna have to experience yourself to really get a feel for it. What I'm trying to do is just give, show you uh, some of the setup and some of the things you need to look at when getting into this hobby. 
So once you've picked out your firearm, the next thing you need to do is get onto your ammunition. So I'm gonna grab the camera here and we are gonna take a little stroll over to my other table where I've got some ammunition. All right, so ammunition sells in, generally speaking, three different types. So you've got your single boxes of 25. Now in a registered, like a legitimate skeet and trap uh, shoot, you are going through an entire box. So you're firing a total of 25 shells because you have 25 targets to hit. So every round you're going through a box of these. So some people will just buy, you know, two boxes because that's all they're gonna shoot that day. Some people will buy <clears throat> hundred packs because they'll fire hundred rounds a day. Or you can buy what's called a flat. So a flat is 250 shells. And so right there you got 500, 600, 625. There's 600, 675 rounds on this table. I buy flats, generally speaking. Uh, it, it's just for the sake of convenience because I don't reload. Uh, that being said, if you do get into skeet and trap shooting fairly heavily, reloading is a very good idea. But that's, uh, that's that. Now, your shot size is very important. So for skeets, generally speaking, you want to use number eights or number nines. Uh, personally, I prefer number eights. Uh, they're a little heavier. You don't get as many pellets as a number nine. Uh, but, I mean... The, the pellets are slightly heavier and they generally speaking break more. I've only shot two perfect games in my life. Um, I, you know, I've fired hundreds of rounds of skeet over the years. I've only shot two perfect games and I was using number eight. So, you know, maybe number nines would make it better. I couldn't tell you, but personally I like number eights. For trap, you want something a little heavier. You want to be using something like the seven and a half. Uh, because, so as the numbers go down, the pellet sizes get bigger and you get less, get like bigger and you get less of them. Uh, but for trap, you're shooting at a longer range. You want heavier pellets because they've got the range to, uh, to reach out there, as well as, again, a proper size choke. But that's the ammunition. Your ammunition brand, that's completely your preference. Like, like if you like Federal, Remington, Rio, Estate, Challenger, whatever brand your choice is, that is completely up to you. That's something that you need to determine on your own uh, if you're brand loyal. Personally, uh, I like Challenger. Main reason is it's made in Canada as well as it reliably cycles semi-automatics. Any semi-automatic I've seen at a ski club, challengers will reliably cycle it. Federal, eh, it's kind of iffy. That cheapo Winchester stuff, I, I wouldn't even put that in an over and under to be honest with you, but again, personal preference. Uh, so those are the main things you need for skeet. Anything past this now is not mandatory. You can go out skeet shooting with that. What I'm gonna show you next is just carrying options and things like that. So right here, Right here, we've got a, uh, uh, a belt and a vest. So there are three main options for carry, or four, I guess. Option number one is you just take the shells out of the box, you throw them in your pocket, and you just carry them like such, or like a coat pocket kind of thing, whatever. Not the greatest option, but it does work. Option number two is these uh, shell belts. Uh, I highly recommend against these because of the simple fact they're inconvenient to try and grab shells from as you go, as well as... <laughs> After every round, you've got to individually load every single shell back in these belts. They're cheap. They're, they do the job, but in my opinion, they're very inconvenient. So if you want to use those, again, I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't use. I'm just trying to tell you from experience for me what worked and what didn't. Option number three is a shell like a, uh, like a dump pouch. So you see people with like the military like dump pouches, or you can get like a legitimate like skeet shooting dump pouch where it's a belt like this, but it's got a big pouch on the bottom. Uh, that holds, uh, like basically what, you, what you'll see people do is they'll just take a box and dump it in and just be done with it. And you just carry them loose like that. Uh, those are great options. They're very affordable. You'll see them around like $20, $25, maybe more. Again, it all depends on brand. Uh, but those are great options, especially for new shooters getting into the sport. The best option uh, out of them is an actual legitimate vest. So this right here is just like an Allen grade. It's not anything fancy. It's just a little vest, but it does the job very well. Now, the reason vests are such are popular options is one is they've got multiple pouches for holding shells, uh, as well as, again, if you're running an over and under, when you eject the shells, you can just eject them in your hand and use the empty pouch. That way, unlike a semi-automatic or a pump where you have to go back around and pick up all your shells and then dump them either in a garbage or a, a shell dump, whatever you have, you can just pull them right out of your, your vest pocket. It, it's a lot more convenient, but again, how much is convenience worth to you? Because a vest like this is about $75. 
Uh, or, you know what's funny, look on Amazon, look up skeet shooting vest, you'll see them for about $6,000, $6,500, and I don't know why. And if you buy a skeet vest for $6,000, I'm gonna be honest, you gotta rethink your life, because that is fucked. <laughs> Anywho, continuing on, so vests, another great option is, generally speaking, when you get them tailored for either a left or a right-handed shooter, they are padded. So these vests have an extra little bit of padding, like foam padding right here for your shoulder, because... While skeet loads and game loads like these, they don't kick that much. Like, they're very light. They don't really hurt you any. But the when you shoot 100, you know, 100, 150 shells in a day, you're hurting. I'm going to tell you, I, like, I'll be honest, by the end of it, you're going to be a little sore. Either your face is going to be a little swollen up or uh, your shoulder is going to be hurting. You will have bruising. Uh, padding is a great way to go, especially during the summer when you're not, like, layered up on winter clothing. Like a big heavy winter jacket kind of thing. And then you can, the vest, like I said, vests come in all shapes and sizes. This one's great because it's got a mesh lining. So it breathes. So you're not, you're not going to worry about overheating too much in the summer. So that's why I personally, I like the vest. I think the vest is an absolutely ideal option. If again, if you're willing to get into it, like I, I'm not telling you to get into the sport. I'm not telling you what you do and don't need. I'm simply telling you what I found works for me and things that you might want to consider for yourself. But that's that. Now, last but not least is just the actual targets themselves. So these are, uh, this is uh, like a register. This is a legitimate skeet target. Um, these are the Lowry Precision ones. They're made right here in Canada. Uh, great little targets. They're about three inches, three and a half inches. I don't know the exact dimensions. I think they're about three inches. They're not very big. So when you like shoot these with a shotgun, you'd be surprised how easy it is to miss. And people, the common argument you're gonna hear is like, yeah, but the pattern, there's such a big spread pattern. That is correct. There's a lot of air around that target. All right, this is a very small target with a shitload of sky behind it. So <laughs> it, it is very easy to miss these. So don't let anybody ever tell you that let the spread do its job. You as the shooter got to do the brunt of the work. That being said, I've had targets and like, you're not going to believe me and I wish I'd have found it, but I shot at a target and I was like, I hit that because I saw the target do this in the air. I was like, I hit that. There's no freaking way. But the problem is, is if the target doesn't break or the target doesn't chip, a piece doesn't fly off, it doesn't count as a hit. So I, w I saw where it landed. I ran over and grabbed it. I found nine holes in this, but it just, it's held together, which again is why you want an open choke. You want as many pellets to hit it as possible so you can ensure that a piece breaks off. Like, believe it or not, these are very brittle, but you, at the same time, you'd be amazed how they hold together. What you want when you hit a target is you want this. That's what you want. You want this bastard to shatter or even better turn, oops, or even better turn to dust. But as long as a piece breaks off, if one piece, like even if you take some paint off the top of it, as long as a piece comes off, that counts as a dead bird. Therefore, that's a hit target. So that, uh, that's that. But um yeah, uh, I, I've kind of rambled on a little too long. I didn't want the video to be this long, but that is essentially a setup for skeet and trap shooting. That's everything you could possibly need uh, aside from money. The only other thing you need is cash. But once you have a gun and ammunition, you are ready to go. That's all you need. Anything, shell pouches, carrying kit, vests, all that's all secondary. If you really wanted to, you could take a shotgun with a turkey choke and go out uh, skeet shooting with it. I recommend against it, but... Uh, all you need is a gun and ammunition. Anything past that is secondary. All you really need to do is get out and enjoy the sport. Thanks everybody for watching and I will see y'all next time.